Coming to you, Jessica, give us a rundown of what happens next. What's the procedure for the party to, uh, to, for the party to pick up their nominee as it heads to the Democratic National Convention next week? Yeah, so there's just uh, about 100 days left before the convention, and uh, time is tight. And the mechanics of the uh, election may uh, have more to do with who winds up being at the top of the ticket uh, than uh, the ideology of the delegates or of the voters, um, because uh, Kamala Harris obviously already has been briefed, has been sitting in the vice president's seat, uh, and has been privy to the policy of uh, Joe Biden for the last four years. Uh, and already can get the $96 billion that have been raised for their campaign if she does secure the nomination. So she is working the phones like crazy uh, all day today into the evening, calling donors, delegates, uh, key Democrats, asking uh, for their vote, really campaigning on a one-to-one -one, uh, level for their votes. And uh, we're told not really... Um, assuming anything so that she can secure the support going into this upcoming week uh, ahead of Joe Biden's uh, presumed commentary. He, of course, he has not publicly addressed the nation about why he chose not to step down. Uh, and there's some thinking in Washington that perhaps uh, she needs to clinch uh, these votes in, and these delegates before he does so. Uh, and uh, there's uh, there's a lot of uh, a there's not a lot of time uh, really for her to do that. So at the, the convention, uh, the delegates that are pledged to Biden do have a choice uh, with him no longer running to either vote for her or vote for someone else if someone else uh, puts themselves forward. But it really uh, many people uh, are looking at the situation thinking it's it's unlikely that anyone uh, will substantially be able to run against Harris. Uh, she has said via statement she'll work to earn the nomination at next month's party convention. And we do know that polling is indicating that three out of four Democrats do favor Harris as the nominee. That coming from an ABC Ipsos poll just released in the last 24 hours. Uh, she is working the phones. Uh, but as um, uh, Mr. Golub has pointed out, it's unclear who's going to be her running mate and whether that person will uh, really make or break the decision. It's also unclear uh, how that will play out at the convention. It's going to be an exciting one, though, for sure, that we know. Absolutely, Jessica. Despite Biden's backing, it still remains unclear whether Harris will become the nominee or what process the party takes. I'm going to take that question to you, Mr. Golub. Now, at least 40 Democrats were against Biden's re-election. How do you assess Harris being the Democratic nominee, perhaps? Who stands in a way at all? And how do you think the Democrats will rally behind her? If she gets the nomination... <clears throat> excuse me, whoever gets the nomination will have the Democrats rallying around her. As I indicated, there's such a release, I think, of positive emotion and enthusiasm for now taking the case to Donald Trump, putting him on the defensive, pointing out all his deficiencies as a candidate and as a president. Not least will be the fact that the script has been flipped. It's now no longer Joe Biden who's the old person with questionable cognitive capabilities. It's Donald Trump, in addition to more substantive policy-oriented weaknesses. So I would see a great rallying behind her or whoever secures the nomination. Uh, in terms of getting beyond that, she has her strengths and weaknesses as a candidate. Uh, the fact that she's a former prosecutor may help for certain populations because it's kind of a natural ad or a national uh, or a natural uh, uh, kind of motto for the Democrats to put out there, you know, the prosecutor versus the criminal or something along those lines, the cop versus the crook, however you might want to to phrase it. She, we have to face the fact that there is still a good amount, unfortunately, of sexism and racism in the United States. That will count against her. Trump may also wheel out some other dirty campaign methods there has been in you know in the Trumposphere, online Trumposphere allegations that well, is she even qualified to run by virtue of having two immigrant parents? Of course she's qualified. Mm -hmm. She's a native born American citizen, but the fact that she's of Indian and Jamaican ancestry may be used against her to try to mobilize some folks against her. So it will be an exciting period leading up to the convention or to her nomination or whoever's nomination, and then an exciting, galvanizing, but also very fretful period leading up to the election in November, given what's at stake and given the tendency of Trump and some of his supporters to go low rather than go high in terms of 
their campaign approaches. Jessica, coming to you, how do you think the Trump camp are going to respond to this with uh, Biden endorsing Kamala Harris and how they're preparing for a Trump versus Harris face off? Well, certainly uh, they um, may well have opposition research on her just to, to advance their own uh, preparation for the vice presidential uh, uh, debate that was supposed to be between uh, the, the newly announced uh, J.D. Vance, a senator from Ohio, and Vice President Kamala Harris, but may well uh, be uh, with uh, someone else at the uh, second place uh, of the Democratic ticket coming up. Uh, and, and you know, they'd like to run against a very progressive candidate because they, they want to draw those contrasts between, uh, especially on immigration policy, on foreign policy, uh, a, a contrast between the way Donald Trump uh, and his administration uh, behaved in those arenas four years ago and the way that they see the world, uh, uh, especially on social issues, which, of course, motivate Americans heavily to go to the polls on cultural issues, uh, on uh, sexual orientation, on issues around uh, books in, in schools. Uh, these are motivating issues that Republicans have used to get people to the polls, uh, and they can draw a pretty uh, a stark contrast, uh, particularly uh, with Vice President Harris and um, and the Trump ticket. So I think they'll be uh, up for the fight. Uh, they already have uh, come out swinging, and that's no surprise when it comes to how the Trump campaign is typically operated. Right, Jessica. Mr. Golub, uh, now, now that we are talking about Kamala Harris and she has been endorsed by Biden, we had earlier witnessed a few weeks back how the Republican camp, uh, pardon me, how the Democratic camp were divided over Biden's presidency. Do you think that this decision by Biden will perhaps unite the Democrats, especially the gap between the Democratic elites and the donors? Oh, yes, certainly. Now, there may be division still if, in fact, the nomination isn't decided for a few weeks until the convention. But I really think that the you do see so much was blocked up in terms of will he or won't he uh, step back from the presidency. Uh, that is uh, President Biden or step back from his candidacy, excuse me, that now in terms of donors, in terms of. Uh, voters, in terms of activists, in terms of people across the spectrum in the Democratic Party. And again, I want to emphasize or at least mention that among some independents and disaffected uh, Republicans, there may be some coming together enthusiastically. Now, whether to the extent to which Kamala Harris can, can, can capitalize on that, uh, you know, as Jessica pointed out, there, the Republicans and Trump will may try to use certain social issues against her. Her image as a progressive California politician, which is partly accurate, partly inaccurate in terms of what she did here in California as state attorney general, uh, there was and, and as a uh, local prosecutor, she was tough on crime, as it said, in in some ways. So how that will play out, we'll see. And there may still be some donors who say we'd rather support other people than Harris. I'm not saying then that the divisions will come to a total end, but they're certainly ameliorated now. And there certainly is a lot of, I think, enthusiasm going forward that wasn't there before. And that was missing from the campaign, the Democrat side of the campaign, long before Biden had that terrible debate performance. One more thing briefly, if I may add, is that I, I would think that when President Biden makes an announcement about why he's stepping back, He'll say it's because it became clear to him that he had very little chance of winning. He probably won't reference health or something like that. And that might diffuse the notions for his actually resigning from the presidency and really provide an honest interpretation of why he thought that he should step back, that so many people whose opinions he respects have said, this isn't your year anymore, Mr. President. Do something for the good of the country. And in fact, what the Democrats may then turn around to do and say Donald Trump should do something for the good of the country and step back from his campaign, given his deficiencies. Of course, Donald Trump will not respond favorably to that suggestion. But Mr. Gorb, just a follow up on that. You do speak of how a lot of Democrats, senior Democratic elites, convinced Biden to get out of the race. And we have to talk here about Nancy Pelosi, who was perhaps mm. trying to convince Biden to step aside from the presidential race. And she said that she would favor open nomination 
In a latest statement, she has now called Biden a patriot. Your assessment of that? Oh, that's an excellent question. Um, I would have wished that you asked that question had I thought to wish that you asked it. In other words, I'm very glad you asked it. Mm -hmm. Nancy, someone will write a book at some point or a lengthy magazine article, maybe sooner, about all the machinations that went on very clearly, or it seems clearly, organized by Nancy Pelosi, the former Speaker of the House, who's a very, very adept, crafty politician on both a policy and a political level, uh, in terms of gradually stepping up the pressure on President Biden without really confronting him frontally uh, to, in terms of more leaks coming out in the press, more and more representatives, senators, other influential figures, George Clooney, the famous actor, through an op-ed in the New York Times, urging him not to run, people praising him for his service as part of that, but saying that you just doesn't look good for you, President Biden, to win at this point for the good of the party and the country step back. Nancy Pelosi has probably, it seems, been central to that. Maybe President, former President Obama and some other key figures have played a role, but she's been central to that, including even now up to today, praising him for his decision and she may well play a role in terms of as we discussed in terms of whether Kamala Harris will simply secure the nomination without opposition or if Nancy Pelosi and some others argue strongly for more of an open process an open convention maybe other potential candidates coming forward but certainly she's secured her place in history by virtue of securing or playing such an instrumental role in present Biden declining not to declining to run.